Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown giving full endorsement to Stock your promotion, Royal Blend Radio The station with integrity, the station with a difference Remember me tell you, Lloyd Brown says so Full Darcy Stock your promotion, Royal Blend Radio We now stop till we drop, Zane Black I'm Janiceness and I always tune in to the SPRB Radio Podcast with General Culture and Sister Sharon Mango. Yo, you don't have to take my word for it. Just tune in and catch the vibration. Yeah, this one is knockings. This is DJ Maestro, out of London, and I fully endorse SPRB Radio Podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Check them out. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Greetings. My name is Diana Wright, singer, songwriter, and poetess. I fully endorse SPRB radio podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Check them out. Trust you won't be disappointed. Yes. This is Embry Simani out the UK, and I'm fully endorsing SPRB radio podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Keep it yes, this is Jerry Harris. I want to fully endorse the SPRB radio podcast with 10 Star General and Cheryl Mango. You won't be disappointed. Check it out. Hi, I'm Nana Genesis and I fully endorse SPRB radio with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Yes. Check it out. Hey, this is Tony Anthony out of Canada. And I definitely endorse SPRB radio podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Manga. Yeah, man, I definitely endorse SPRB radio podcast with the 10 Star General and Sharon Manga. Check them out, all right? Cool. Sticky dicky ding dong ding dong ding dong ding dong ding. Sticky dicky ding dong ding. Yeah, man, this is the original message General Martino Speck because you don't know and I fully endorse. SPRB radio podcast with the 10 star general himself and sure and mango. You don't know the thing going on, man. Trust me, mad things. So just link up for the dubs here. To the loo, it's 10 star general. Stuck here. Hey, what's up? My name is Ray Vaughn and I fully support SPRB radio podcast. Check in. Bad sound. You make me feel so strong. Dub is a battlefield. Yes, uh, this is Jennifer Barrett out of Jamaica. You know, don't know endorsing SPRB radio broadcast. You know, don't know. Yes, I am with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Oh, you for miss it? Check them out, man. <laughs> I'm Sister Audrey, and I fully endorse SPRB Radio with 10 Star General and Sharon Manko. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's your girl Keisha Martin. Fully, fully, fully endorsing SPRB Radio Podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. You already know, it's a whole entire vibe. And I mean, say, everybody just rock and come in. Cause we are jumping at the housing scheme. Bring your queen and leave your machine. Cause I fear good vibes from the scene. It rock steady, baby. Rock steady. Right over to SPRB Radio Podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Keisha Martin says so. Fully endorsed. Yeah, it's your girl, Kerry Lopez. I'm a surprise about now. I'm representing for SPRB Radio Podcast. Not no normal, but that's what I'm a 10 star general. Big up yourself. And the beautiful host herself, Sharon Mango, Kerry Lopez in Jamaica, are representing for the podcast show. I'm going to tell the people, check it out. Not no normal about the settings for me. I send you there, you know what time it is. I come there, come see me. Yeah, my tailor said we never I win a mix business with pleasure. Yeah, man. I wait there, there. Check out the podcast, no man. Ten star, tell them, no man. This is Yami Bolo from Outer Jamaica. And I fully endorse SPRB radio podcast with Ten Star General and Sharon Mango. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Bless your love. Yami Bolo said that. Now, greatest people, my name is Captain Blaze out of Nigeria, Lagos. We fully endorsing the SPRB radio podcast with Tensta General and Sharon Mango. Boom! Don't touch the dial. Stay tuned.
Yes, bless. It is thy turbulence to the future from the Tread on my camp. And I fully endorse SPRB Radio Podcast with 10 stars general. I want to talk about Sharon Mango. Check it out. Trust you won't be disappointed. I could have been one of the most notorious ladies. I'm still loving you, even though you're gone. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Hi, this is your girl Winnie. And this is your girl Freddie. From out of London. And we fully endorse SPRB Radio Podcast with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Check them out. Greetings, everyone. This is Glenn Washington from Ota, Florida. And I fully endorse SPRB Radio Podcast with the 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. Check them out, seen. I read. Rastafari. Uno can buy a leaf with temper. Let me tell you that plain and simple. And yes, a safari. And I full dose SPRB radio podcast with the 10 star general and Sharon Mango. Check them out. You won't be disappointed. For the latest on your favorite artists and more, sponsored by JojoMatMusic.com. Hello, everyone. I am Pistol, and this is The Buzz. Ash's performance of Bob Marley and the Wailers, who feels it knows it perfectly, summed up the mood of those in attendance at the private funeral of reggae singer Jamersa Marley. It was held last Tuesday at the Bob Marley Museum on Hope Road in St. Andrew, Jamaica. From as early as 6 a.m., members of the Marley family, clad in white, and close friends began arriving at the former home of Jamersa's grandfather, Bob Marley, for an Ethiopian Orthodox farewell to Jamersa, who died suddenly in Florida on December. 27th. Mourners include several members of the entertainment fraternity led by Jamersa's father, Stephen Marley. In attendance were Marcia Griffiths, Sean Paul, Taurus Riley, Nadine Sutherland, Jesse Royal, Wayne Marshall, Bounty Killer, Spraga Benz, and Alton Ellis Jr., Minister of Entertainment and Culture, Olivia Babsy Grange, and Council General of Jamaica, Southern USA, Oliver Mayer, were also in attendance. One of Dancehall's newest sensations, Baker, has plenty of high expectations for the upcoming release of the remix to his hit single, She Like It, which he did with Steph Landon. He said, it has been a very busy time for me, and to secure a collaboration or any work with any international act like Steph Landon is a positive. We connected multiple times, and working with her was good. The energy was natural, and she's a phenomenal woman and artist, Baker told reporters. Baker is a headlining act on the One Uptown live show in Toronto, named after the DJ's TikTok trending single. He's currently enjoying huge success on the dance hall scene with only a small catalog of songs. At the end of 2022, She Like It ended up on Grammy-winning British rock band Coldplay's list of favorite songs, and it has since captured the attention of more listeners with a larger number of streams being garnered from the European markets. Trending sensation Sasik is the second female dancehall recording artist to announce a major deal with New York-based Payday Records. In an exclusive interview, she said that more than 10 international companies reached out to secure licensing deals for her single, Cute and Neat, Pose. She said she chose to work with Payday Records because of their track record for breaking artists and their stellar work ethic. She said the Payday offer was more of what she was looking for because her and her team were not satisfied with a deal that only focused on licensing cute and neat. In addition to the licensing and distribution deal, she said we have just inked an international EP and album deal, so we are in studio writing, recording, and getting prepared for whichever project comes first. Cute and Neat, which was originally published in 2019, gained popularity last August with more than a million persons, including celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Rita Ora, as well as the Liverpool Football Club, utilizing it on TikTok. Payday Records was relaunched in 2017, 25 years after it was launched by Ultra Music founder Patrick Moxie. The label distributes its music through Ultra Music in the US and Sony in the UK. Last year, Aishana signed a record deal with the label and Sasik anticipates it could open doors for them to work together. Payday is known for launching the career of hip-hop mogul Jay-Z, among others. 
Reggae singer Itana has returned to the fight with a scaled-down complaint against her former label VP Records over breach of contract and copyright infringement and a new demand for over U.S. $10 million in damages after a New York judge partially dismissed her previous complaint last month. In the amended complaint filed on Friday, January 13th, the wrong address singer and her company, Free Mind Music LLC, are now making eight claims against the defendants. VP Records Retail Outlet Inc., VP Music Group Inc., VP Record Distributors LLC, VP Records of Brooklyn LLC, Greensleeves Publishing Limited, GPL, and STB Music Inc., collectively VP and Greensleeves Publishing Limited. The new filing comes after U.S. District Court Judge Gregory H. Woods ruled in VP and GPL's favor to dismiss nine of Itana's 14 claims against the companies in a previous complaint. That decision, which was handed down on December 30th had given the singer two weeks to amend the deficiencies identified in her complaint or alternatively proceed with the five remaining claims. I am Pistol and that my friends was The Buzz. That was The Buzz, your music news update for the latest on your favorite artists and more. Sponsored by JojoMacMusic.com Now here's a song from our sponsor Jojo Mac. Conversation show.
Life Conversation Show. Wow. You're welcome to the Life Conversation Show. And our guest today is the great, and I have to put great in front of Lascelles Douglas. Can't be no other way. <laughs> now you're going to have to unmute for a second. Look at me talking and look now it's so mute. Yes, we have to say the great. So, so exciting. So mm -hmm. I want to know how Sharon pulled a rabbit out of a hat. Well, first of all, it was a, I believe a young lady, um, goes by the name Moji. Yeah. And she sent me information about LaSalle and I, um, oh, okay. You know, just the thought, maybe you'd like to interview him. And she sent the music. Oh, my God, when I heard the music. I think I called you right away, like, listen. There is a gentleman that I feel we should bring to the show. You got to hear his music. What's his name? Hey, what's his name? LaSalle Douglas. And that's a very interesting name, LaSalle. Very... Hmm. What's the word? Je sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, this, 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 does he know who he is yet? Does this man know who he is? Because when I heard the music, I said, who? Yeah. This is a crooner. He's wicked. And then I have, he's a crooner. I have a couple of songs. That's my favorite already. My ultimate favorite. I was don't, playing it last night, actually, it, when I was yeah, cooking. Don't okay, don't it, say it. Okay. Don't mention it. Before we start, let's just play one of these songs from his album. Yes. Uh, we're going to be talking about a whole load of stuff, but here's one of those tracks. The Live Conversation Show. Say my dance, uh, that was a false start, and in comes the original start, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm a soldier fighting on the battlefield of life. shall prosper cause great is he that is in me than he that is track is called battlefield absolutely love this track this track is just absolutely brilliant and i'm gonna play it in its entirety okay now can you hear me loud and clear yes i can you can great yes great. right because i've had to do a few adjustments all right so here we go. We're going to play that one more time. I'm a soldier fighting on the battlefield of life. Wrath. They stood still in time. 
like you've known me for a long time and mm. you Lascelles James decided to write a song about me <laughs> wow do you know what I mean powerful yes. song absolutely yeah. love it We're thank you get into uh, uh, who you are because up until Sharon told me about you, I didn't even know you existed. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I profess to know a lot about music and many players of instruments and those who've been in the industry. But for some reason, I've never heard of you. I, I, I read about you and I'm like, wow. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So it's an absolute pleasure. I have to salute you, you know. So we're going to get into your history. Much I respect. I, I have to let Sharon do the honours of leading <laughs> the way on this one because she's the one who found you. She pulled a rabbit out of a hat. That means she pulled a gem onto the show. I'm honoured. Well, <laughs> well I'm honored. let me first thank Moji Ramanetti that reached out to me. And um, who was who was that? Moji, I got it's, it's, Mojiba. Mojiba, but on the email, it's what? Yeah, it's Moji. Mojiba. Yep. So Mojiba was the one that reached out once again and um, sent me all his info, mm -hmm. and I was totally blown away. And I think I told him, blown away. We would love to have him on the show. So I'm giving thanks to Mojiba bringing the awareness to me and sending it out to our show today because this man is a hidden gem. Yeah. Mm. The vocals alone took me home. When I say that, 
and his music, I felt like, because as you can tell, I'm from London, right? But yes, I live in the US, yeah? But your music brought me home, like our lovers and our powerful music, man. You just have it, you got it. I thank you for saying that. Yeah, brother, you, ooh. But anyway. Yes. Thank you to each and everybody here today and um, raising the awareness show. We have our esteemed guest, Marcel Douglas, and the live conversation show. Mm. With Marcel Douglas. Very yes. exciting, very exciting, very, very exciting. I am Shannon Mango, representing Robblen Productions. Along with my amazing host, Ten Star General. Ten Star General? Hey. Say what hey, happens. Hey, Let hey, them know hey. who you are. Well, I'm Ten Star General, one of the founders of this podcast, and uh, I represent Stockhead Promotions. Stockhead Promotions and Royal Blend, which represents, Sharon represents <coughs> Royal Blend. We kind of just merged the two companies together and decided to bring to you this this podcast so we you know we love to delve into the history of many artists who've been in the industry for years i for one have been do, doing this for donkey's years and sharon has been doing this for a little while as well so you know it's it's always a pleasure for me personally especially when i haven't heard of an artist before or a musician and they come before me and I'm like, wow, how comes I haven't heard of this brother before? You know what I mean? So it, it really gets my curiosity juices flowing, you know? So we're just gonna go through the, the, the full nine yards with you to, to figure out who you are. And you know, after this show, it simply goes on YouTube uh, and hopefully people, more and more people like me will get to know who you are, you know. So this is about your journey, your history, you know, uh, the full nine yards, as much as we can muster up. And we keep it in good taste as well, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to let Sharon lead the way on, on this um, musical history. And, you know, as per normal, we like to take you back, way back. Indeed. Back to the days when you were wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, shorts. <laughs> That's funny. Um, anyway, Sharon, take over. Marcel's Douglas, thank you so much. But do you, does anybody hear an echo? Is it echo? Oh, okay. I don't know why I have an echo. Anyway, thank you so much, Marcel, for being here today. It's an honor to actually be speaking to you because I was totally blown away by your bio and your um, your music, of course. So, with that being said, we're going to take you way back. We're going to take you way back. Woo! And you're going to tell us who LaSalle Douglas is. Is LaSalle Douglas your Christian name? Um, where you were born? went to school, mom and dad, brothers and sisters, aspirations. And let's start with where you were born. Well, first of all, um, thank you for having me. Um, this, this is indeed a privilege um, from my standpoint. Um, I've been looking forward to this from the moment the, the, we scheduled this, this, this um, conversation, this reason. Yes. Um, so let me, let me, um, let me travel back. Um, I am, again, LaSalle Douglas. It is indeed my given name. Um, you know, LaSalle is uh, kind of a, a derivative of the French LaSalle. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously Douglas is my surname. So I was, um, was born in, in Clarendon, the parish mm -hmm. where a lot of you know, top-notch artists, singers, entertainers um, mm -hmm. were born. So I am a product of that environment. Um, Mia Penn is the city. Um, and my little village is called Effortville. 
And Effortville is, um, from my research, um, digging into the name Effortville, it came from back in the day when the people that were living in that area, they were all um, basically like a, a huge community and they all put their effort together to create that village. And so Effortville came from that. Wow. Um, so um, <laughs> back in the D, um, I gravitated to music back in the D. Um, started singing at a very early age with my sister, which is two years my senior, here's Madhurika. Um, so, uh, and then branched out with my brother after my sister kind of drifted a little different path. Um, but I am from a sibling um, set of five, and I am what my mom considered the wash belly. Ah, um, <laughs> the last one. Okay. Yes. The wash belly. Um, we were raised in an environment. Oh, the last kid. He was asking yeah. what the wash belly is. Wash belly, last kid, the last child. Um, so raised in an environment um, full of love. Mm -hmm. Mom was, um, I grew up to um, see my mom as a minister in the church. Um, my dad was also in the church environment. And just about everybody in the family were um, brought up in that environment. And I think um, from the beginning of my singing, um, say passion, as I wouldn't call it a career in the early stage of being seven, singing with my little sister. But um, the passion for music started then. And then as we grew up, we basically stayed in the church, became um, choir boys. My brother and I started singing as well. And we became part of the church choir. Okay. Um, and we just basically sang within the community, within the church, within our home. My brother and I was really a major, but I knew then that there was something between us in terms of the love for singing. And then when he stopped with me, I continued on the path. And I gravitated to music based on messages, um, based on the kind of harmony that, that attracted me. And just the sweetness of music um, kind of just gravitated me. There were, even in the church, there were a bunch of, um, when I was growing up, there were a, a, a series of missionaries from the state here who used to travel you know, um, to Jamaica and in the church singing. And as those guys were singing, whether they're from Texas or wherever part of the United States, there's just something about the singing that, that just gravitated me. And I used to remember just standing at the windows, just peeking in or being inside the church, peeking in, just listening to that, that, that the vocal, the arrangement, the style. So my, my kind of music, the root of that is, is from all of those things that, that I'm talking about. Um, in my days, listening to, to the Paragons, um, listening to um, Alton Ellis, listening to the Heptones, um, Ken Booth, Bob. You know, there, there are so many artists. And, and then back in my days growing up, there were more groups and those groups had sweet harmony um, in their song. And so I gravitated to that. There's another group that I was really interested in and, and actually did my best to, to sing similar to the group that I started later down the road. Um, but the, the Blues Busters. Oh yeah. Sweet <laughs> harmony. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we actually started singing some of those songs. But yeah, in a nutshell, my, the beginning of my singing started from that point um, to where I am today. So I'm open for your questions. Ah, so school. What did you aspire to be in school? In school? Um, <laughs> I always wanted to be a doctor. Um, in school, I thought, um, of, you know, biology was nothing that I was interested in. And science, um, I kind of dug deep into those things. But I um, always thought of becoming a philosopher, so to speak. And 
um, thought of pursuing a PhD in, in, in that becoming a doctor of philosophy, but things didn't work out based on, again, environment. Um, the education might have been there, but in terms of the resources, the facility that was not at hand. And so I just continued living and doing the best I can. Um, I went to um, Mapen Primary School um, in, in that level uh, of education, it was, you know, it was, it was fun at the time because we're young. And then once I got into secondary school, um, Mapen Junior Sec, which is now at Central High, um, still, you know, had aspiration of, of, of doing great things. I'm, I'm, I'm always uh, a thinker, um, kind of a progressive type of thinking. Um, and then from secondary school, um, I went to Baptist College, Calvary Baptist College um, on uh, Hazelpen um, in that area. Um, so school to me was, was, was something of, of, of a good start. It was a, a good step in the right direction. Um, and then from Baptist College, I um, left Jamaica and went to Toronto, spent a year um, in Toronto. And, um, yeah. What year was that? How old were you then? Um, when I went to Toronto, it was 1973. I was probably about 17, 18. And you went to Toronto by yourself? No, um, my my siblings were already there. So oh. made a move, spent some time, spent a year, and then mm -hmm. um, went back to Jamaica in 74. Okay, okay, okay. Then star, because I know you're gonna dig back. If I keep going, it's gonna go forward. You're gonna dig back on, on some things. Okay. I, I, I was there. So, so where did you grow up again? Remind me, please. Where did I grow up? Yeah. Well, my starting, like I said, it then, Maypen, Clarina. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's kind of like, uh, let's call that, uh, Freddie McGregor uh, uh, territory. Yes. Oh, yes. Tea. Yeah. A man like um, who else was there? Toots and the Mito. Yeah, but who was part of the Claridonians? Remind me. Oh. I geez. think it was Ernest Wilson, if I'm not mistaken. No. Um, Claridonian before uh, Freddie McGregor took over. Um, Jesus. <laughs> it was known as one of the greatest crooners. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and he, he sadly passed away a few years ago. I'll, I'll try and remember his name, but yeah. Okay. So, so what was life like growing up in Clarendon as a young kid? Life, life was. Um, I mean, if you go back to, to then compared to now, life was pretty. Um, it's. It's pretty easy going, you know. You know, it wasn't as as rough and tough and tumble as it is today. Life was a little easier back then because, um, you know, our parents did everything possible to maintain a home where, you know, we we were raised with some some form of discipline, so and it was more of a community so style say, living. Would you say you had a middle class? Uh, way of life? I, I, I probably would say a middle class way of life and, and, and not necessarily because of um, materialistic um, influences or, or possession. Just the level of respect that um, my parents gained from who they are. And that trickled down to us, the children. So. So we we would be on the street, for example, and if there is um, if there is something that I'm doing um, that was not expected of me by my mom's friends or church sisters or, or, or brothers, there was that level of respect that we would basically just draw ourselves up and and, and set ourselves in position to where we're not giving that feeling of of embarrassment to our family. So. For me, the, the middle class was not more much of a, a possession kind of thing, but it was more of of, of principle, um, right. decency, because um, we were all, I'd say, poor 
but not poor in the sense that you know we don't know right from wrong. It might right. might be just again resources. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, th th thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Beverly. That was the name I was looking for, Ernest Wilson. Yeah. Yes, the great Ernest Wilson from Clarendon too. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so, so moving on from that, what led to you moving to Toronto? Was there a particular reason or was it just um, that? Well, it's, it's just, you know, the, 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 most of us that left Jamaica, in my opinion, was economics. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what was at our disposal then was not what we really wanted we wanted more and economically it was not readily available um you, nobody leaves paradise because paradise is not good think about it um so there there must be something else that that brought us out of that paradise um so economically and and the fact that you know my siblings had migrated and i was kind of the one who left and so I decided to make that move. Yeah. Okay. So, so would I be correct in saying when you got to Toronto was when you met up with Derek Thompson, Thomas? No, actually, we got to back up a little bit. <clears throat> okay, go for it. Derek Thomas and I, Cat, we went to Baptist, um, Calvary Baptist together. But prior to Baptist, he was already at, at Calvary Baptist, and he actually encouraged me to join that, that, that college. But we were in a group in the community. Mm -hmm. um, we had a group together um, called the His Majesty of Fear. And we were singing on, around a community throat meeting concerts small concert, you know, uh, school concerts and stuff like that. We, we, and that's, that's where the love, that's where the love for the Blues Busters came in, because him and I were a duo just doing some sweet music um, throughout the community. We also... Give me a year, please. A year, um, I would say probably, probably 72, 71, 72, we had we had um, that group going um, prior to. Yeah. We, we we were basically in an area where again a lot of musicians, a lot of other artists was coming up. Glenn Washington um, was one of those artists coming up at the time. We grew up together, same community. We used to jam together. Um, so there's an influence of 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 that love for music from that younger age. Right. Um, while singing with Derek, um, we were hanging out one day and smoking a spit. And <laughs> the great, yes. <laughs> the great culture, the great Joseph Hill of culture okay. was passing because he was living in our community at the time. Um, and then he passed us hearing us singing. And when he passed, I remember he kind of just healed us up and he heard the harmony and then he stopped. And he said, but well, I'm on them song, wicked. <laughs> so he came back and sat with us and started to guide us a little bit in terms of harmony when I should have come in, when Kat should come in, how we should kind of then use the music together to get that sweet harmony. At that point, it was the beginning of a new era for us because we became partners in the group and the three of us started singing after that. We changed the name of the group from His Majesty Affair to the Imperial Minstrel. Um, with Joseph Hill, that was before culture. And then um, my first my first entry into a recording studio was because of Joseph Hill, who brought us to Studio One to record um, our first single called Illiteracy Will. So, wow. okay. yeah. So we have some history there in terms of time 
and in terms of um, growth, you know, teaching, learning, teaching, and adapting to the environment around us at the time, musically. So, yeah. Now, now, now I've got to drag you back a little bit because, because Studio One is like, is like the creme de la creme of the music industry. Definitely. Tell me about your experience at Studio One. And Studio One. Um, and who were some of the musicians you came across? Um, my experience with Studio One, it was a little nervous. And again, we were young, it was the first time. Yeah. Um, Joseph um, Culture introduced me to one person I remember from that experience was Ben Ball. He was a drummer okay. that was present at the time. And I think he was more of a studio um, musician. Okay. And then Ben Ball, um, basically when I went to Toronto, fortunately I ran into Ben Ball in Toronto, became good friends in Toronto, reconnected um, with the memories of meeting him in the studio. But that studio, the, 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 one of the biggest experiences that I, that I um, remember is seeing, meeting some of those guys that were playing on music that I used to dance to or sing along with. And then to meet those guys in the flesh was, was, was awesome. Right. Awesome. Right. Legends, real legends. Yes. Wow. Well, ben Moe. What was he like to work with? Pardon? What was he like to work with? He was he was he was pretty he was pretty um I think easy to work with but but in instructional type mm. you know um and because of the relationship between him and Joseph Hill because they were basically French prior to us going in right. it was easy for him to kind of just walk us through um you know arranging the the, the song. At the time, so, 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 so yeah, I'd say easy, easy going. Like yes, I heard back in those days you had one take. One take. You did it in one take. We did it in two. In two. Okay. Yes, well, we did it in two. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I never, I never knew that. I knew yes. that you, you, you had gone to Studio One. You know, but um, wow, that's an experience. So, so after Studio One, where does LaSalle's Douglas end up? After Studio One, um, we we continued um, just singing um, within within the community and around Jamaica, um, and then um, Joseph Hill decided to form the group Culture. So Derek and I were just basically back to being the duo. Um, and then shortly after that, I, I in 73, I went to Toronto. Um, and then I, when I came back in, in 74, um, I continued singing um, and, and writing. I, I seriously was more focused on writing. Um, I was always inspired to, to write about personal experiences, mm -hmm. um, the environment, yeah. life in general. Um, but my writing is, is something that oftentimes my friends would say, why, what, what, behind you with a, with a record, um, cassette back then. To capture the, the, the imagination and, and the inspiration. Because I, I be walking and be singing and something just comes and before you know it, I'm singing my song. It flows. Um so yeah, I continued um singing and then when I was there tr still trying to um to get my, my thoughts together in terms of the direction I wanted to, to, to go in with, with my writing. Um, and my singing, um, we we got into playing a lot of soccer at the time. We were just back in, in the seventies. Um, it was nothing but you know um, 
staying in tune with with yourself and not not allowing yourself to be dragged into the the the, the lifestyle that was kind of presenting itself to us that was negative. So did a lot of stuff, um, burn a lot of weed, and just free his job. You know, so just yes. <laughs> <laughs> concentrate, concentrate on, on, on living seriously um, in, in a way where the examples that we're setting is the examples that we want the youth coming behind us mm. to follow. Mm. So in that moment, the, the soccer took us to a different level. It, 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 it took us to where we decided to create a team. We, were, we had a team of young um, community friends because we all grew up in the same community and we were playing on the, on the same team. And then we formed this group called Humble Iron. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the soccer club called Humble Iron. No, not Straight out of Effortville, near Penn. Humble Iron um, was a, a, a group of, of, again, community community entertainment, um, I shouldn't say anything, the top soccer players that, that just came together with that mindset of creating something that was going to be lasting. And it was all about, again, unity, love, um, <laughs> giving thanks to who we, we are and how we were raised. Um, we, we played so much soccer that we became the champion at Clarendon when we actually expanded ourselves. Um, with, with just again the unity among us, we were all like brothers. You know, we, we ate out of the same plate sometimes, sleeping in, in the same bed sometimes, visit each other's homes. We were kind of family, and that that bond among us took us to a level to where the kind of ball that we were playing at the time was just really elevated, um, and the attention became. Um, to where we, we were flustered with love and admiration. Um, from the community around us and on the outskirts. Mm. Today, Umbalayan is still standing strong, playing national, um, national league style uh, in Jamaica. So um, I'm grateful for that opportunity. Um, we, we, we did what we set out to do. And the longevity of that is I attributed to a good bridge of mine, um, Jackie. He is still holding the fort, even though Humberland is not um, to say owned by us, um, but we started it. Um, but he's there maintaining the the, the structure. Right. Um, holding it together. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I I give him I give him I give him kudos for standing in the gap and making sure that that Humberland has not lost. Um, the, 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 its purpose, right. put it that way. Right. So we have to give you a, a next salute for that one there. <laughs> Appreciate it. it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's doing something for the younger uh, generation in Jamaica as we speak. And, and, and that is key. That is key because the, the beginning of that was that intent mm. is to create something that would draw the attention of those who want to either pursue the same thing yeah. or to use that as a stepping stone for something bigger or better down the road. Right. So yes. Right. So 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 internationally is, is that a, a team that is looked upon? Most definitely. Umbelan is like I said is in the mix of the best of soccer teams in Jamaica as we speak. Um, playing playing um, national league soccer and is a team to be reckoned with. Um, it, it's I'm I'm so so honored and proud to be part of that um, original, I'd say, um, organization. Right. Yeah. So at some point yeah. you you end up back in or you you leave to go to Toronto, right? Yes. No. At what point did that emigration take, if I could call it that? 76. Went to Toronto in 76 and went 
went straight into my music, um, continue um, writing, um, got involved with um, a bunch of musicians. And I remember the gentleman that you and I were talking about earlier, Lassa James, yeah. who is, um, who is a, was a keyboardist at the time. He is, um, uh, we, we got together another brethren called Winston Mattis, brethren mm-hmm. named Anthony Hibbert, uh, brethren called Anthony Banks. Um, we did a lot of music in Toronto. We played around Toronto. Um, and the outskirts of Toronto. Tell, tell uh, me something. You, you, you ever come across the man called Jackie Mito? Jackie Mito, no. Never, I've never really met him personally, but I know because he was, he was always talking about traveling on, on, on um, cruises. Because he ended up in Canada, you know that, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did, yeah. but great, great things about him as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sharon. No, yes, no, uh, Max. No, no, Beverly is is not the same one. It's not the same one, because I asked him that, and and Beverly is asking, is it Lascelles James the saxophonist? And I was telling her no. No, <laughs> no. Because I asked that... him the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So. so... No, go ahead. Go ahead, Lascelles. You were... No, so I was saying um the the. The, the, the musicians that I played with in Toronto uh, were, I think, the, I'd say they were the, the catalyst for where I am today. Um, in addition to my earlier days growing up back home, the musicians that I work with in Toronto are very instrumental in the growth of my talent, so to speak. Mm. And um, because when we when we started playing music in Toronto, we we were basically fusing um, R and B, funk with reggae. It was more of an experimentation, and was the beginning to me of what we now call crossover. And mm-hmm. it had a, a very a very um, influential. Um, player in the band, Winston Mattis. Um, God rest his soul, he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but he was the bass player in the band and he basically was into just about anything that pertains to music. And so I've learned a lot from him um, in terms of structuring the music when you're writing um, and making sure that you have your hook, <laughs> you know? Um, to, 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 to captivate the audience of the listeners um, and just just basically producing, promoting, mastering your craft. Um, my first, one of my first um, released in Toronto garnered um, being nominated as best new artist in Toronto. Um, and a lot of other things that took place within that environment of singing and engaging with other musicians. The, 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 the band that I had was a Starlight, the Starlight Band. Again, we, we did a lot of work in, in, in Toronto. Mm. So my growth for, um, for music or within the music fraternity was to continue um, writing, singing, recording, and hopefully make a difference in the environment. And, and I know that there are probably some voids in, in my career where a song would be recorded and released and then you don't hear anything from me for a while. It's, it's, it's a personal decision in terms of what was happening then musically and how my kind of music, the way I write, the things that I think about was accepted in the environment. There, if, 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 if you notice, there are different genre um, or different style of singing or, or, or writing. The, the messages that I want to deliver to the masses um, at some point were not really what the masses were looking for. It, 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 the hype kind of overtake the positivity 
And I personally, you know, I was speaking with another um, interviewer recently. I, I personally decided not to not to forfeit my integrity for the almighty dollar mm. or to be famous. Um, I personally decided if this is the way it's going to be, then I'll just kind of up the end for now. Because I know my talent is within me. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, I will come back to the scene as I am now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that I feel that this is the right time um, because again, the positivity um, lyrically that I want to deliver to the world mm -hmm. is, is needed. And there is this void now musically that I feel that I'm part of that puzzle to fit into that positiveness that is required, that is needed mm -hmm. to bring us back to where we were when I was growing up, yeah. you know, where music really turned us on, music really inspired us. Um, lyrically, you know, um, the, the instrumentation behind music for me is one thing, because if you play an instrument up, you can just dance to the instrument um, play, being played. But then when the vocal is attached to the instrumentation, then you listen to the messages, you listen to what is being delivered. Mm -hmm. And it either, it either guides you this way or guides you that way. Absolutely. It's a directive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me so. say, um, Ten Star, do you have your applause? Because if I have to go back to something that, um, get your applause ready. Let me see what I got. To you got your applause ready? You got your applause button ready? Because uh, I got to say something. Wait, hold on. All right, go for it. Go the cells. Listen, you dropped a gem, two. And we're carrying along talking. It is a big deal. You start in that football club. It's a very big deal. Because you may not own it, but you started it. And I'm sure that has helped a lot of the wayward youths out there looking for something to do. And now they have this facility that they can go and play football. That's a big deal. So Ten star, giddy applause. <laughs> we have to say yes, my brother. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's, a, that's one of the most beautiful stories I heard. And Appreciate then that. Brought a whole nother gem with culture, Joseph Hill. <laughs> now you calmly dropped in. Oh, it was Joseph Hill. That is another big deal. Before culture came around. Wow. To that Shazza. Yeah, I had to come back. I said, I'm going to let him talk you now. But I'm going to come back to that one because that is a big deal. Like you knew Joseph Hill before anybody knew who Joseph Hill was. Yes. Right? And he saw you and your friend. Yes. Right? Singing and telling us on the wicked, and then you formed the group. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a beautiful thing. Thank you. And a part of history because I didn't know he was with no other band. You know, I didn't know, we didn't know that side of Joseph Hill, but you just brought enlightenment to that. I'm like, that's, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let me come back to you now. Let's go forward. As you stated, when you were doing your music, and you, I've listened to your songs and how, like, you write with intention. Mm -hmm. You write with deliberation a message out. But as we know in the, the years going forward, nobody wants to hear positive music. And you decided to say, I'm going to step back in. And so during that time, what were you doing? Did you work? What were you doing? I, um, during that time, um, wow. It's a family environment. Um, mm -hmm. And since you're not making music and getting hits, you gotta work. So I basically committed myself to taking care of my family. Um, and dabbling still, you know, 
singing, writing, but focusing on a career, so to speak. So um, while in Toronto, um, I spent many years with a particular company, um, started from the bottom to where I ended up at um, a, a capacity that um, <laughs> I literally amazed myself, but not surprised, so to speak. But, um, you know, started out, to give you a little history, started out in the warehouse uh, <laughs> as a forklift driver. Uh, worked my way to where I was literally second in command within the company within, um, I'd say, a period of uh, five, six years. Um, I've always said where you start is not necessarily where you have to end up. If you have if you have aspirations, you want to get your foot more and keep your dreams in front of you so that you're running down the dreams. It will take you to wherever you want. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that vision. Mm -hmm. And so um, within that corporation, within that company, I was um, pretty pretty comfortable. Um, what I was doing in that career. And it was during that time I actually was brought into the band that I talked about. I actually didn't mention that in um, the Rhythm Alliance. It was the band that I was called to part of with Asas G, Winston Martin, uh, and a couple of other artists. And we stuck together. And, and, and I think that's the band that, that basically helped me again, to, to increase um, my professionalism, my, my writing skill and all that stuff. Um, recorded for a reason, but there's a beautiful song um, written back in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, but yes, build career, um, company is folded after 10 years. Um, and then I bought out that company and I stayed on for another five. So I spent about 14 and a half years in that company while I'm singing and performing around Toronto. Uh, and then um, late 80s, 90s, I basically folded. And then I moved to state. Mm -hmm. And I moved to New York and um, continue again. Because um, music is something that you can't really run from because it's within you. You know, you can't hide from it. So while I was in, I was still right. doing my thing. Um, and then um, growing, my, my, my focus has always been to write. And, and, and one of the things that I, I believe um, is with me is the ability to, to just write based on inspiration. So sometimes I might not even be with music, but my writing is here, the thoughts are coming and I'm writing, I'm humming. I sometimes I'm whistling a tune and before you know it, that whistling becomes, you know, a tune for a song. I write the rhythm, I write the lyrics for it. So anyways, in the 90s, um, I basically decided to pursue more my passion, and I went to um, went to Jamaica and and spent some time with uh, with Sly and Bobby and creating some tracks. And um, another British man whose name is also Lasselles Lasselles Bedford Gitsy, um, we collaborated and um, created some tracks. Nine to five. Um, got some relief, got some nice um, rotations on those tracks. Never did as or as best as I wanted it to, but I was satisfied with the outcome. And then um, kind of just laid me up a little bit again. Um, and um, you might want to kind of maybe inject and go back a little bit and, and ask some other questions, but going along with what was happening then, I, I Decided to lay low, continue on a career path again in the stage, 
worked for um, another major retail company, um, building my, my you know, skills behind the scenes. Uh, in that company, again, started out small scale, worked my way to where um, I got involved in resources, um, managing HR for a while. Um, so before you go any further, let's stick a pin right there. So uh, what was the time frame? Like what years are we talking now? Um, in New York, I'm 95, I went to Jamaica work with Slide, then I came back. So, so within that same time frame, 95, I ended up, 96, I ended up working with this company okay. uh, and started in, in sales uh, and then work into human resources you know, quite a few years with them. Then I went back into, into sales um, until um, I decided to, you know, not return, um, spend about 25 years with the company while I'm still in my career. So there were things happening while you guys are hearing about me, but I'm writing and I'm reporting and I have, you know, so I'm, now it's like it's an explosion because all of these things that I've been working on while building careers, all this new all this thing that I've been kind of just building is now at a point like the cup is overflowing. Um, and then there is so much to write about now. Um, right. With life the way it is, with the environment it is, the world is in a state of um, conflict and, and, and all kinds of different things happen. There's so much to write about. So in, 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 in that level, um, 20, 2015, I decided to, with the help of Winston Mattis, uh, we revived the label that I had in Tampa. Um, Winston Mattis came to visit me stick, in Tampa. Stick, 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 stick a pen. Yes. Um, because you're crackling up uh, slightly a bit too much. What what is your signal say? Is your signal okay? Speaking to me? Yeah, yeah is your signal okay? Is your signal okay? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. are crackling. It sounds a little yeah, crackling. Yeah. I was going for it too. Have you got full bars up there? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna work with it. Okay. Yeah, continue. Okay. So um, the songs that I recorded, I was in Toronto. Um, we sold the songs to the record store. Um, and, you know, we got paid for those songs. But then those days when it was fortified, vinyl, uh, mm -hmm. CDs were not out. So my son called me. Um, one of the years, I think 2013, 2014, and he said, Pops, do you know what's going on with your song in England? I well, said, no. He said, well, check it out uh, on, on YouTube. I'm seeing one of my tracks, I'm not losing the battle. Um, it, he sold for $45. I tell, I tell you what, I tell you what one second. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to ask you to do is log out and log back in again. Okay. Log out and then log back in again. And up until we see you back in the building, we're going to play one of your tracks, all right? Awesome. Yes. Okay. Because we want to hear everything he's saying. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents. So hopefully he'll be back in the building in a few seconds. And then what we're going to do is just play a few of these tracks. And uh, here's a track called Tux Me. That's my favorite one, actually. Is it? Yeah. Brilliant track. This one and another one. It's really nice. Yes, he's been my girl. Look at it. Yes, where is that nice girl? Is your favorite track too? Is his favorite one too? Mm -hmm. 
It's not the dress you wear that makes you my woman. It's not the way you wear your hair. Now I'm. It's not the things which you possess that made me want you. It wasn't your father's fame. It's not the friends you hung around that impressed me. Or the ritzy places you go. It's not the ring which I placed upon your finger. Or your diamond you read. The Live Conversation Show. Things you do. Oh, without question. <laughs> Take it back to where it was, Sharon. Uh, I'm trying to remember now where we were when he went. I was there. I was with the uh, my my brother Winston Mattis, right. encouraging me to um, to protect my intellectual property because those songs being being sold in the in the UK. I had no control over those because they were being sold by collectors who have already sold them to record store. So there was no way for me to gain anything from it. Those were already sold records. So Winston encouraged me because um, he was an, an attorney and he was an, uh, an entertainment attorney. So he knew the inside of what needs to get done. So his encouragement was to revive the company here in the state and then attach those songs back to me so my intellectual properties now becomes mine. Right. Um, so at that point, we decided to start a company, Starlight Entertainment Enterprise and Media Inc., uh, with intention to dabble a little bit into um, television or movies at some point. Lascelles James, Winston Mattis, um, Anthony Hibbert, Wicked Bass Player and Anthony Banks um, were the original um, partners in that business. Unfortunately, as we know, sometimes, like I said, when sometimes people start with you, they don't always stay with you. Stay with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. People change, things happen, we move on. But I'm here and the vision is my vision, so I'm still pursuing to um, make this uh, a, a reality to where I can deliver <laughs> the promises I've made to myself and to my fans to live, deliver good music. So here we are now, we, we actually recorded um, several songs when we opened, when we started the business. Mm. Uh, one is called Worthy, the other is called um, Lives in the Balance. And that, that trap is, is a trap that means a lot to me, lives in the balance. Worthy is another trap that has its own story. Mm. Um, so with just me being the only person on the label at this time, um, the intent is to, to, to release, and I did release the EP. Mm. Um, the EP that has taken me to you guys mm. um, called Touch Me. Um, and I am extremely happy and proud um, for the success the EP is is actually you know garnering um, throughout so right. this is where I'm at now right wow 
I will tell you this, this album, I was, again, I'm totally blown away. I love it. Thank you. I have some favorites on there, of course. Um, Ten Star just played Touch Me. My ultimate favorite is Move On. Matter of fact, when I was cooking yesterday, I have to turn time around me up. <laughs> I was cooking and I was like, rewind. <laughs> At the, the players of the instruments now, you spoke of them. All those gentlemen were the ones that played on the, your, in this album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 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 ones that played Winston Matthews, obviously Winston Matthews is no longer with us, so um, he's not on the, the album. Um, mm -hmm. But the let me name the artists, the, the musicians on the album is Benira Dyer in Toronto. Was, all of this was recorded in Tor Toronto. Mm -hmm. Anthony Cameron, guitar player bass player um anthony banks actually is studio is um one less studio in toronto he's also a drummer um and then um a couple of other um, other uh, musicians uh, basically that i am not familiar with but was brought in to finish the product i go in i do my voicing um i leave i come back home so on and so forth but these are the architect behind what you're listening to um, musically. And I give, to, honestly, I, I'm talking to Tony the other day and I'm giving him props um, for the production um, of putting this music together the way they did. And he basically shot me down and says, look man, we, we, we could do anything with the music, but without the artist, it wouldn't really mean anything. And so we're basically edifying each other. And this is what, it's all about is is not taking right. the glory for yourself. Exactly. It, right. it, it takes a team to make something like this happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very happy that you said that, and that's the reason I brought up the fact who the players of instruments are. Yeah, a singer can vocalize all day, but when you have the players of instruments, you know how to work with the voice. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Do a song, make a song, produce a song behind yeah. a specific type of voice. That's what makes the song. Yeah. So yeah. for people like me, who of course never heard of Mr. Douglas, and then I hear, I listen to this album, I'm like, who don't know about him? Why shouldn't they know about this man? You know, honestly, honestly, because we're gonna get into uh, this a little bit more, but. I think mainly because with the state of the music industry today, right? You're hearing music, some of it don't make no sense to me, right? There's no positivity, there's no longevity. However, people are gravitating to this new beat and I'm saying, why? And then when I get an email with your music, I'm like, this is music. Mm. This is lyrics. Mm -hmm. I understand what this man is doing. So I think for you at this point in time, you, you're right on time. No matter what happened in the past, you know, you had to put it down and you got okay, raising a family and you're doing your thing, but it never left you. You have not strayed from who you are, which makes you an amazing individual because some people cannot contend with that. They have to move with what's out there, but you said, no, I'm not doing that, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's, and that's a big deal. You, you stay true to your roots. And that is what I got from this album. It was, I thought, you know, production was well, players of instruments, amazing. You know what I mean? And yeah. so you're in Florida. So I did my little band, so you're in Florida. So when you have to record, do you go to Toronto or do yes. you? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, we're looking at different ways of doing it now. Um, that Because technology is such that you can do a lot of things differently um, without traveling um, back and forth. Right. So we're trying to, 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 to capitalize on that opportunity. But I'm going to go back a little bit and touch on what you just said in terms of um, retaining uh, and being true to myself. What I believe, I honestly believe that 
entertainers, and I, I, I sometimes I'm, I'm reluctant to refer to myself as entertaining, uh, as an entertainer. Um, I, I think of myself more of um, someone who has been given a platform um, to deliver a message right. um, or messages. So personally for me, when I'm writing, I'm writing so that I remember just talking before we came on, um, I was talking with um, my brethren and, and, and he's saying, you know, 10 star, he's saying, it's like you wrote this song for me. So when you write, you're not just writing about you. You're writing so that it's relatable to anybody, somebody. And if you touch a life, you may touch two. But we as performers, um, we are given for first again, just me, this is how I think. The responsibility that we have is similar to a pastor. Right. He has a church, he has his congregation, he preaches to his congregation. You have a teacher. The teacher has a schoolroom. She teaches the students about things that they're coming into, things that they don't know about. And she's the one, he's the one that is basically bringing those things to their attention so that they grow and develop, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a motivational speaker, he has a platform and he speaks to 2,000, 3,500 people, regardless of the amount, but he's speaking positivity mm -hmm. into people. We as artists, we have been given a platform that our responsibility is to elevate, is to motivate, is to uplift, is to educate, is to teach, is to bring people together, not to create the vision, but to bring people together. And to actually, sometimes, sometimes someone, some people don't understand what love really is and the creator give us that insight so that we can tell somebody, sing it to somebody, what true love really is, or what the, the spiritual rem means to us, or yeah. how to navigate yourself through life. It's our music. It's our music that does that. And so for me, when I write, I write based on inspiration, based on things that comes to mind. Um, I was thinking, you know, this morning, and a thought came to me in terms of Let me just um, say this. the thought process. You, you've got to understand what the assignment is, though, right? That's it. Because if you don't understand what the assignment is, that's it. Then other things come into play. Yes, absolutely. And and in, 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 and I think I, I, you just you just hit the nail on the head. You know, in, in, instead of being an entertainer is that we, we have been sent in an assignment. We have a responsibility, one to another. I believe that wholeheartedly. And it is, it is, it is, it is why I write the way I write and, and very seldomly will do a cover because, um, you know, I do a cover because it, it, it touches me, it reaches me and it resonates with the things that I believe in as well. But, um, I just, I just believe that we can, we can, we can change a person's outlook based on the message that we deliver. And mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, Bob has been gone for so long. Bob Marley, he's been gone for so long, right? His music is still being played, being gravitated to, being loved by every nation that you can think of. Why? It's the, it's the content, it's the message. Whether he wrote them himself or somebody wrote them for him, he's the one that delivered the message. And those songs, and he's not the only one, I'm just using him as an example because he's one of the biggest. Um, but when you think of how those music really ties into people's lives today, um, someone, I, I think, um, Sharon mentioned about shelf life is the longevity of you know your music in 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 Bob 
Bob's song, the, the song that says, you know, um, I think a line in it, says, they, they say what we know is only what they teach us, ambush in the night, and we're so ignorant that every time they can reach us, right? Through political strategy, they keep us hungry. And when you got to get some food, your brother's got to be your enemy. Listen to that, just that block of that song. It's being lived to thee. Yeah. And it was written back then, so it was also lived back then. So the change that we need has still not yet manifested itself. So the journey, the, 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 the mission is still necessary for us as, as artists to continue. Teaching, uplifting, changing minds positively. I, I, I keep going back to the roots, you know, it, it's like the root of our industry has to be realized, you know, and up until the next generation behind us understands the assignment mm -hmm. you know, or the mission, mm -hmm. you know, the message is always going to be lost. Yep. You know what I mean? So part of, I mean, even you reciting the lyrical content of Bob Marley, that was all part of the root of where our music came from or stems yes. from. Bob Marley actually understood the longevity of our industry, the music itself, roots rock reggae in, in its entirety. Yeah. Which is why it is, and he, because I even remember, right, um, an interview he had done, and he was talking about the vital ingredients of our music, especially the ching, ching, and, mm. you know, the other formats of our industry. And he even said that it will last forever. Mm -hmm. And look and behold, like you, you know, rightfully said many years later we're still listening to bob marley as if he had created that music yesterday and we want to why and the more we stray away from the vital ingredients you know is the more we're going to be in this horrendous situation that we find ourselves and right now the the, the where I see our industry is blown the door wide open for people like Lascelles Douglas to stream through. And that's what I see. I see the door has been blown wide open for you to come in and make your mark. Appreciate that. Appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying that. It's all a reconfiguration. Yes. Yeah. And, it, you know, the beauty is, the, the beauty is, it really was never gone. It just laid dormant. That's right. And it's just so, the door now has to be open. Somebody had, there's an awakening, so to speak, of what is needed to change the trajectory of the direction that we as human beings are headed down. Mm -hmm. Which is why every now and again, I keep on posting what I deem as real, like real music in its real form, in its real art form, in its real, you know, authenticness of yes. our industry. You know what I mean? Yes. From what has been created from way back when, which mm -hmm. is what the industry, for some reason, strayed away from. And mm -hmm. what we also find, the creators of this wonderful music called reggae music or Root Rocks Reggae, which is Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We all know it's Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also other countries which is trying to keep to the original format of our music. It doesn't seem to be Jamaicans, it seems to be the Euro Europeans. Yes. If you close your eyes, I could play a white roots rock reggae band and you were swear blind that was a Jamaican band. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always going to need people like yourself, you know, to re-educate, 
And I think the onus is, is on us right. to, to, to re-educate and realign the next generation with where it should be. Yeah. That's just my thoughts on it. Agreed. Sharon. Yes, sir. Well, um, again, you do understand the assignment. <laughs> um, and there's so much work to be done. Yeah, we, we, we have to push his music continuously. Make we have to, that's what I'm saying. You understand the assignment. We understand the assignment. Yeah. There's still so much work to do. However, you are, you've begun. So yeah. now I think that for yourself, you are in a position or you're ready to take everything on now because that door is open for you. Go in there, make your mark. I, I cannot stop talking about the album. I don't know what you've done in the past. I haven't heard your past music, but what you got going on here is amazing and I'm and I say that to say there is something in there for everyone. And each delivery is different. Mm -hmm. You know how somebody can you can do a whole album. Battlefield. Battlefield. <laughs> move on, move on, move on. So again, there's something for everybody and your delivery in each song is different. I respected that so much because, as I was about to say before, you can do an album, sing the songs, but they kind of sound the same. Your delivery, though, in different ones, like how that's how I analyze music. I always look to see how your delivery is good. How are you, you going to do with this one? For instance, my ultimate favorite movie, on. Move on, right? The vocals were on point for the mood, for what you were trying to say. And then the one that Tenstar was talking about, the one that we played before, your vocals were on point. That's the thing. It's reaching a person's mind when you listen to the song. Tenstar said you wrote that song for him, right? So imagine each of your, your different songs that you have, who you going to touch. You know why? Because people are ready for it now. People are ready to now hear the difference. The time for those songs. Mm. Now. Yeah, as I said, they're ready. Now is the time. I'm just. Everyone is going through a battlefield. Yeah. You know what I mean? that, that battlefield effect where everyone feels like, Jesus, who's listening? No one's listening to us. Yeah. But yet, this is what we're going through. Right. How many people have survived the battlefield? Right. How many people, that, like, there's a show that, you know, Sharon and I and the rest of our team. Is, is talking about mental health, mm -hmm. which also I can relate to Battlefield. Yes. Because they've been on that battlefield, they feel like they can't survive it anymore. So how many young people are committing suicide? You'll be astonished to know the figures. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It really is. That there's a reason why you did that song, and there's an ever reason why we continually need that message in the music i um i to, to kind of tack on to what you guys are saying is the music that i was raised on and the music that i listened to growing up they were like that to me mm. um, they inspired me i wanted to to be those guys, those artists, I, in, in my own right, um, Burning Spear, um, go back to Bob, Fred McGregor, Dennis Brown. I don't know if you guys know this, but he, he, he was my idol, still is my idol. Dennis Brown was the, the, the person that literally moved me. At one point growing up back in the day, um, most people, when I'm singing, they say, but I want someone like Dennis to see him. You know, so over time, I've developed my own style. Um, but somewhere deep down there, I still retain a little bit of, of Dennis um, in terms of delivery, in terms of um, his, 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 uh, his, his writing um, ability. Yeah. Um, but 
again, a lot of artists really you combine those artists made me who I am today. Um, and so when I hear you guys, you know, just talk about the things you talked about, it, it moved me because obviously the 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 path that I been on um, is now showing itself um, the way I want it to. So since you guys have received it, and it's telling me for confirmation that I'm on the right path. Um, I, I really feel that we have a responsibility again to, to change, to change. We can change positively the direction uh, people, the globe, is, is, is going in through our music. And, and we may not be able to change the entire world, but if we, one at a time, you know, um, that would be, uh, I, I think, a feat in itself. Mm. So, yeah, I'm honored <laughs> to hear you guys' comments, that, you know, the way you did um, just now. It just solidifies um, my reasons for being where I am today. And the simple fact is I have no intention of um, looking back. Um, I use look. I use the back as a stepping stone to where I am now. It's right now. It's just um, taking this yeah. to the next level, um, making you guys continue proud. Um, yeah. It's the ultimate goal. Listen, um, I personally, um, I, I feel, I feel happy to know where your mindset is. You know, because I feel like we're living in a time, you know, where we have to be particular about the kind of lyrical content that we normalize to the cranium, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, you know, the theory has always been if you listen to a song long enough, it becomes normalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I refuse to normalize the kind of stupid content that I continually hear. Yeah. Which is why I continually push the right kind of vibration, hoping that it will sink in somewhere somehow. You know? And to know that you're on that trail, you know, you totally have our backing, you know, whether it's pushing your music to as far as we can, raising the awareness, whatever it is, you have our backing. Yeah. I, I think, I think this way. Um, I was sitting here this morning waiting um, to get this thing going, and uh, a thought that I always process in in, in my mind. It, it, it's it's there are three things, three things really that are important to our existence, mm -hmm. and it starts with the mind. It's the mind. It's your action and it's your result. Yeah. There's no other thing that keeps us afloat other than what comes from here pushes you to act. Mm -hmm. If you act, you're going to get the results. So you think positive, watch this. Your actions are gonna be positive. Yeah. If you act positive, the results are gonna be positive. So if you reverse the process and you think negative, you're going to act negative. If you act negative, the results are going to be negative. Yeah. Now, at the same time, we know that both positive and negative vibration is necessary in life, right? Because without the negative, you have nothing to challenge to become positive. Mm -hmm. But it's how you handle, it's how you process, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so, for me, the only way to think um, is positive, and when the negative comes, I use the positive to outdo the negative. And I use this example that to, to kind of tie in what I was just saying, is you need both. Um, we have electric cars today, and electric cars don't really have any batteries. But when we're using primarily batteries in a car, mm -hmm. the battery has two ports. One's positive, one is negative. You can't function the car without one without both, yeah. you need both. 
to get that car going, to get that vehicle going. So positive and negatives are necessary for our existence, but is how we process. And so when I take those things and put it into the way I write, into the way you know I process things, what you guys are hearing is 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 natural. It has to come that way because that's the only process right. that puts these thoughts into practice. When I go into the studio, I'm 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 delivering something that that can change a brother's mindset, that can change a sister's outlook on herself. That just you know that's all I want to do. To be honest with you, if, if there's not a dollar gain in what I'm doing, I'm satisfied. Because like you said, um, Ten Star, is you have to understand what the mission is, mm -hmm. what the assignment is. And if you don't focus on the, the material gain, the material gain will come without you even making an effort. You're focusing on something that is more important yeah. than the material. Yeah. Yeah. That's some of the people. <laughs> See that? <laughs> that, 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 that's some of that. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I love it. Well, I tell you what, because we have to round up the show, but Sharon, uh, yes. over to you and round up, please. Okay. So, um, honestly, Lucille, we could talk to you all day because it's just been. A pleasure. You're so enlightening. It is just nice to see that how you view things, your methodology, just how your move is just straight, just honest. You know what I mean? And again, what your album is amazing. I have no doubt whatever else you got coming is gonna be just as great. Um I want to go back real quick to your process, though. You were saying, we were talking about, um, I asked you if you go to Canada all the time because you seem to be the type of individual where your mind just keeps working. How you can keep running to, to Canada, you know what I mean? You're, you're still, you'll just keep going. So what is your process? What do you think that you can do because, or that you will do because there are easier ways for you to transport your music, you know, send your stem, do whatever you necessary. You know what I mean? Like, what, what will you do now? For the moment, until, until the, the, the thoughts that Tony and I are working on to get this flow a little easier, um, he is now transitioning to Jamaica. Um, so our plan is, for me to jump on a plane, go yard, do some stuff, and and come back to to home, um, because there's a vibe in Jamaica mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter how good the music sound up in Canada, up in the US, mm -hmm. there's a vibe that's needed, and I'm on the yard you can get that that vibe. So that's where I'm at. Um, okay. On another note, is there is a there is a second thought that I have something in the works that, in addition to my music, um, my plan is to be an inspirational speaker. So what I write and sing about, if you don't like secular music or my kind of music that I can stand in front of a podium and speak to you about the things that I sing about. Because it's all positive, it's all motivating, it's all inspiring. Um, that's the next phase of um, a podcast um, and, and or a stand-up speaking engagement kind of thing. Working on that um, right now. But, because um, I think that, I honestly think that the way I write and the information that is flowing through me on a regular basis, I think that the assignment has been given. Mm -hmm. And so the mission has to be um, taken up and run with it. Um, and then beyond that, I can't, I can't say um, I would like to think that it's going to be um, it's going to be beneficial to many. 
Um, but if I change one life <laughs> in this process, if I change one person's life, it becomes a domino effect because that person is going to change somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's my goal, you know? Yes, and yeah. so the mission continues. It seems to me, before we even round up, it seems to me the strong upbringing from your parents is what made you who you are because your parents were very involved in the church, correct? Yes. It's, yes. So, it's very reminiscent. It's, you could see it in you. It's not going to leave. It's, it's, it's just flowing through you and that has helped to elevate what you, your mindset, but mm -hmm. the simple fact that you want to still reach people on another level, even if they don't get it through, you said secular music. So at the church, people don't know, listen, say something. Yes. That's the same church, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, let me, I'm sorry, but I have to say it. With a lot of these churches, there's a lot of corruptions. The mm -hmm. leaders, the so-called leaders for these churches who's supposed to be leading the congregation mm -hmm. and also lead them astray. Mm -hmm. You now, I know you know this, so you will be needed on that, in that aspect. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's a beautiful thing to embrace that, number one, to embrace a situation like that because it's going to happen. Mm. It will be changing people's minds. If again, uh, if you don't understand that music, if, if the secular music is too much, let's talk about it then. Yeah. Let me help to educate you. Yeah. You know what I'm I, saying? You're willing to do that. Yes. And and, and I thank you. And and, and before we, we, we go, you just touched on on, on the spiritual level, the, the, the teaching, the upbringing. Um, yes, I have I had a dad, you know, God rest his soul. I had a mom and, 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 and I have four siblings, but I got to tell you that um, my mother is, um, yeah, she passed away um, at 95, October past the year. And I believe that all of me is her. Um, all of me is her. And what I represent is what I've seen growing up as a young man. And then my four siblings, we're, we're like one pea in a pot, the four of us. We have different mindsets, um, but there is a level of love among us, us five that um, I feel like we're inseparable. And we have our differences but there's, there's that love. And so what I'm doing right now is embraced by every one of them. And their spirit, even though still alive, their spirit is with me in all that I'm doing. And I think I'm doing everything to make them proud as well. And so um, you just touched on that, you just touched on that and, 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 and it just, you just tugged at my heart there. Um, Another thing I want to just say to you is you fell in love with um, Move On. And move On is a personal experience. Um, mm -hmm. And I wrote about that. Um, and I, I, I kind of want you to kind of dig into what that means. Um, a relationship just went south. And, you know, um, after trial and, 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 and trying to maintain um, you know, God knows I've, I've done my best to make it work, but somewhere along the line, something went wrong. But I'm wishing you well, you know, so it's me talking to, and that's my life. Um, mm -hmm. And so, again, that's how I write. Um, I write to inspire, and I'm glad that I touched you, Sharon, with that song. And yeah, it was the whole, um, it was yeah. the music, basically, you know what I mean? That was a real lover's rock song, and I was like, yeah. oh, I'm much London tour. I'm sure DJ Maestro is going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sal, this is the part of our show now where um, we offer the opportunity for our guests if they would like to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there may be one or two because I'm... I just want to say, I'm very happy I received the email about you. You are my new friend. Thank you. I have 
all intentions of staying in touch with you because I just have to see where you're going to go next. I'm excited to see where you're going to go next. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you, again, as I said, you are family. You are not family. You've incorporated you into our family, our SPRB family. And um, again, so back to anybody in the audience who would like to... Let, let me give you a quick, a quick snippet of what's coming, what you can expect from LaSalle. Oh. I have, I have a single coming out on Valentine's Day. It's a cover of an India RE track called Ready for Love. Be ready. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I know the song. Ooh, yes. yes. I hear that. Yes. Live and direct. <laughs> Live and Why, you sing a little piece. Pardon? You go and sing a little piece. Yeah. Go on now. <laughs> go on now. Uh, I am ready for love. Why are you hiding from me? I quickly give my freedom. To be held in your captivity, I am ready for love. All oh, the joy and the pain, and all the time that it takes to be held in your embrace. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I knew, well, I know the song because I actually had the album work, um, that the song is on. So that's a great song. Wait, it is. Know the original. Huh? Yes. Wait, Sharon knows the original. Yeah, in the Irene? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All yes. Right, right. Big. Big. I said, that's a like big song. Name. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that one, Tesla? I don't know it. Oh what? my God! But it's gonna make me go dig it out now. I'm gonna dig it. Yeah, out. into your Irie, ready for love. <laughs> it was a very big song, lyrically. Right. She's an amazing artist, lyrically. Ooh, that oh yeah. Song yes. Blew up. So that's a great song, though. DJ Maestro, unmute, <laughs> please. DJ Maestro. DJ oh, Maestro. Hello. Hello. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing? Bless. <laughs> yes. Um. Mr. Douglas, you are a very unique man, you know. <laughs> I mean, I come, to the, I come into the party very late, but you're very unique. Um, Sharon said it earlier, when you, when you went off a little while ago, was talking about your EP um, and Touch Me. Um, that's, I just love, it's like, like Sharon, I love that tune, man. Your, your EP <laughs> is, yes. yeah, man, your EP is, is out there. I think every, we need more from you. <laughs> we, need, the, we need more from you. The, the, the people that are ready for you. <laughs> He's starving. He's coming. Guy. He's starving. Thank you, DJ Maestro. Thank you. I'm starving, that, people. That, that touched me. I'm going to be, oh, sorry, I'm going to be playing it. It's Friday on my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's what I said. That's how I called your name. I said, DJ I'm Maestro, got, yeah. wonderful thing happened. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, nice. it's gonna be playing. All I can say is, yeah, um, you know, keep on, keep on doing your thing, man. I mean, you, you, you the the world is 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 at your feet, and they wait. The, I think the people that are wait for you, and um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for more coming from you, man. Because I think you know you're a very talented man, very intellectual man. You know, you know your thing. You know, you're, you're writing and, you, and, your, and your voice is, is very unique, as I said. So, yeah, I, I'll have to just give you props and salute you and, and duck my hat to you, man. It's, um, you know, keep up the good work. Um, and, you know, the world is your oyster, man. It's, 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 it's there to be taken and uh, your time is now. Your time Thank is you. Now. So Thank you. Keep, it, keep up the good work and, and, and blessings to everyone in the room. So, and, and take care. Sharon, 10 star, everybody. Thank you so Respect. much, DJ Mr. Douglas. Michael. Yes. Take care, my brother. Respect. Blessings. Blessings. Wow. Anybody else? What a thing. 
What are what you doing, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Douglas? <laughs> yeah, I'm star trouble. Whoa. If you're going come in like you have starved the people with the music, that's what you're going here. I start with my. Is there anybody else who would like to say anything uh, to Mr. Douglas before we round up? Can yes, you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? All yes, right. Yeah. All right, Sir Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Because, I mean, we didn't know about you before, you know, but we do now. Mm. And. You are, you are seriously uh, somebody, I mean, you've been around long before Joseph Hill became culture. Yes. So yes. believe me, you are foundation. <laughs> seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From you can go back so far, you are past foundation, you know. And I love your voice as well. I hear the original reggae in mm -hmm. your voice. You know, and I love your vibrato that you have there. Your voice sweet, you know. So Ooh. we need to hear something more from you. Okay. We can't just leave it like this. Promise. You know? All right. I promise. Don't, don't leave it like this. So, so, so keep going forward. And I know that's your intention right now. And we, we intend to follow you. So we will. All awesome. right. Awesome. Okay. Sharon, right. thank, thank you for bringing Let's say Douglas to the show. Thank you. I've gone again. So bless you, okay? Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else would like to say something? There's a lady I've been watching her. Me think say in the kitchen. The lady in the pink outfit. This lady been watching. Me say she cook, she eat, she not giving none. So you know we have to talk about the things then. Miss lady. Miss Samson. Let me see. Miss Samsung, unmute. <laughs> she is, I think. Can you unmute? Maybe not. No. Can we unmute her? No. You know, she looks like my elder sister. Is it? Sister Birdie. Oh! Ah. <laughs> she can't unmute. We can't hear you. Unmute. You got unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Mr. Bernie. Yes. I'm so proud of my baby brother and son. I tell you, oh. I heard all this stuff. I heard the singing man. I was here dancing up. The other one day, I like the way you touch me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I thank you so much thank you all for having my baby brother on you're welcome oh you're welcome i know my mother up in heaven now looking down on him you know I'll be oh. just saying that's my washi that's my baby <laughs> yes, thanks I'm, Eddie. I'm, I'm so proud of him i'm so proud of you man Wow. So proud of you. The Lord is taking you someplace. Yes. Thank you, yes. Sis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, Sister Birdie. Thank <laughs> you. I'm watching her, you know. Yes. <laughs> I'm watching her. So wait. This woman is intense and she accomplished. <laughs> yeah, I have so much to do, but I cannot miss this conversation, you know. It We're so happy. My heart. Yeah. We're so happy you came on and and LaSalle, you didn't know that was your sister in the back all this time. You know? I was I didn't I was looking at her and there was a similarity, but I wasn't sure until she came up. <laughs> I couldn't miss it at all. I could not miss this at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank so you, you logged on. And it's so funny. He spoke about each and every one of you. And, yes, I heard. You no, know, you're all different in your ways, but the love and the oh, yes, it's is there. there. It's there. there. That's a beautiful thing. God bless you, Miss Birdie. Yeah. <laughs> and God bless you too. God bless you too. Thanks for having him. Oh, Amen. it's an honor. I know he's, yes, he's going to go some places, you know. Oh, he will. He will. Yes. That we yes. Yes. Him. God has blessed him. Indeed, indeed. Right. And he have a message for young people, you know. Yes. In these songs, he has yes. certainly do. Yeah. Yes. 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 There's a generation that you have to change. Mm. Yes. yes. The mission yes. continues. Yes. Yes. 
I thought he would have sung Stop the Violence. <laughs> oh, he will. Lars. Yes? Why didn't you do Stop the Violence? I'll do this. <laughs> 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 yeah, really? he have a lot there in him. He have a lot in him, you know. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, Thank, God. Thank, Thank God. God. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and and and, and, uh, and um. Thank you so much, Miss Birdie. We you're very you. welcome, hon. You're very welcome. God bless you. Thank you so much. Ten star, what you saying? We're, we're going to leave her in the matrix and uh, I, we, we have to end the show right here. Okay. But it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you just that a little bit better, you know, and to see where your mindset is, to know where your mindset is, gives me encouragement to continue doing what I'm doing. Sometimes I feel deflated because I feel like nobody really caring about where this industry is heading to. And the more I come into contact with people like you, I feel encouraged to continue. Nice. So I think it's important enough for me to say that to you, to for you to realize how important you are to us. Right. Thank you. We're banking on you to help us to... That means a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Man. Ten star salute. And right back at you, sir. Amen. Sharon. Say you good I Say I'm so thank you to each and every one of you who stopped in. Miss Birdie is a wonderful thing. God bless you. God bless you too. <laughs> <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Thank, thank you. you so much, LaSalle. I hope. You enjoyed yourself on the show today. I know our methods are different, but I like our methods because we like to know that you're comfortable and you're able to be as transparent to everyone to let you really know who you are. And this show, I think, showed that. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have you here. We will definitely stay in touch because I will be sending little messages to be like, oh, yeah, today, yeah, make a song, what's going on? <laughs> I will do that. Yes. Now that I know that we are in context. So yes. thank you again for coming on this show with this live conversation. It's been real. Do you have a message you'd like to send out there to your uh, audience? Um, let me leave by saying this. Um, first of all, thank you guys um, for having me. I think the intent and the purpose that I have disclosed to you guys in terms of what I want to do with my music, you guys have just done that for me as well. You've just uplifted me um, to another level in terms of what I'm doing. So obviously it's, I'm doing what I set out to do because you guys have basically again said so. Um, the other thing that I want to say is, is that you know, the Bible says when you, when you, if you read the scripture in, 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 in certain context, um, it states that a, a, a country without a, a vision, you know, the people perish. Mm. Um, we all have to have a vision mm. of where you're heading. If, you, if you're in a car, you must in your mind know the destination that you're heading before you head out. You're not just going to drive to nowhere. So your vision could be ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And what you have heard through my music is my vision of what the world can be. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just here as part of that mission to deliver um, that vision, you know, and hopefully help to open eyes of those mm -hmm. who can us. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage the young folks is put your dreams ahead of you. Nothing is impossible if you think it, um, you believe it, you can achieve mm -hmm. it. Dreams mm -hmm. in front of you and, and, and chase it, chase a dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is possible, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And then one final thing I'm gonna say to you guys, I have a, a song that I, I recorded um, years ago called Created for a Reason. And if you guys um, can access that song, it's YouTube, you know, um, CD Baby, all of those places, you find that song for a reason. That song is a window to my mind. It tells the world who I am as a person, 
what I think, mm -hmm. what I believe. And if I have not said enough today, check that song out and uh, you'll get a little bit more insight. This ain't the end. You know, Wonderful. You Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Much. Awesome. Thanks for having Thanks me, guys. Before you leave. Thank you. You're welcome. Drop our song before we leave. Or to end the show, let's roll out with one of these songs. I don't know. Did you play Touch Me? I don't know. Did you good stuff? Well, no. you did, and we're going to play it again. Can't hear you, Dee. You're okay. musical, but you're good. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Get out of here, this is the last track. We've come to the end of our journey together. together. God knows I've tried to make it work, but somewhere along the line, something went wrong, and now we're moving, moving, going our separate ways. Well, that's all, folks. Can you believe that's my line? Can I go home now? I'm Ten Star General from Star Cape Promotions, and I'm out of here. If you enjoy the content we provide on this YouTube channel, then why not help us by subscribing to SPRB Radio Podcast. Thank you in advance.